Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video on an interview with Patrick Bet David. Trust me, the big companies love it when they raise minimum. Amazon loves it. Walmart loves it when you raise minimum wage. Keep saying raise minimum wage. They don't have a prime going from 13 bucks to 15 bucks to 20 bucks. They, they could care less if you keep doing that because they're going to raise their margins by 20% or whatever it is and make the money back on the back end. They're not dumb. And you're still going to buy it. We're still going to buy it. We don't have a choice. But it's going to put that guy across the street out of business. So the more small businesses go out of business and fewer small businesses we have, the more these big companies are controlling us. Like, you know, this whole thing with banks going out of business and Chase bought a couple of them and these guys bought a couple of them. This is helping the bigger guys. Jamie Dimon sitting there saying, oh, you know what? Let's keep raising and we have to do the responsible thing. Because the bigger guys get to buy the small community banks or the regional banks. This favors them. All right, Kirby. I like these points that he brought up. The point at the end that he brought up about this will increasing the minimum wage will in a sense or in a strategy push smaller businesses out of business and push these bigger companies farther and farther to the top um, to kind of monopolize everything. It's interesting because I can imagine, you know, raising minimum wage, these smaller businesses can't afford the minimum wage being raised. They can't afford to hire these employees and they have no other option but to sell everything and close down business. And bigger companies, as we know, will find systems in, to put in place to cut jobs, replace them with automation and push the price, the higher prices off to the consumer. So, but what are your thoughts on this? Hold on. What Patrick David is saying, Bet David, sorry, is saying is as old as the 21st century. So, Alex, I know for you, so when was you born? So the world will know. When was Nin you born? 1998. 1998. When you was born, you was born to see, when you was born, the only grocery stores you probably didn't know was Publix, Walmart, uh, what else? Dixie. What else was out there? Winn-Dixie, right. But at a time, at a time, before you was born, all the grocery stores and produce and things like that was owned by mom and pop individual stores. It was not owned by a conglomerate, as in the Publix, the Winn-Dixie's, and things like that. So when the cost of everything started increasing, and then the mom and pop, because they would own an individual store, something like that. And so just think, the Carters would own one store here, a grocery store here, and then you go a mile away, and then the, the brewers would own a grocery store here. It was all segmented it wasn't it wasn't you know all walmarts all publics all farmer jacks or all this it was mom and pop that owned it but then you know the the waltons you know starting with the five dot i mean the five cent store and thing like that then they started increasing and banning but when the cost to operate became more than the mom and pop could afford or the conglomerate would come and give them an offer of money that they never seen before because they're looking right now with this finite, finite space like, hey, I'll give you $300,000, $400,000, a million dollars for your grocery store. That's the most money that they will probably see because most mom and pop groceries was probably maybe bringing in, you know, 60, 70, maybe $100,000 a year. So they were looking at the long term factor of it. So they was eating up. So now, as far as the grocery store space that Patrick Dev Pet David was talking about, those days are over. All the mom and pops are gone. I mean, maybe you see a mom and pop meat store, but that's about it. You know, maybe a Latina store that's about to get bought out by Bravos or something. Um, but raising minimum wage don't affect anybody. Look at the big three strike in Detroit. They agreed to higher terms. I mean, look at the UPS strike. They agreed to higher terms. But people will sacrifice for that. Like, let's just say UPS had 100,000 employees before the strike. The strike happened. They got more wages. 
it's not a hundred thousand people that's receiving the higher wages. Maybe eighty, maybe seventy-five thousand, but twenty-five thousand people had to be sacrificed so those other people could happen. So when Patrick Bet David is saying the minimum wage is rising, yeah, look at Walmart. Walmart increased their minimum wages, but jobs were sacrifices, store hours were sacrifices. Hell, they even closed actual stores, like six hundred stores nationwide to give that minimum wage. So people suffered on the consumer end and the production end on the people that was going to receive that money. So raising minimum wage, only thing you do is affect the public. They don't help the public. That make, yeah, that makes sense. And I mean, I figured that's kind of where his point was headed to as far as, you know, raising minimum wage has a, a it, you know, it has an effect to it. You're going to have to cut jobs. You're going to have to cut expenses in order to compensate for that wage increase. The the prices are going to get pushed off to the consumers. You know, it's it's not a perfect world scenario. I, people fail to realize that they think that by rank, raising minimum wage, you know, everything is still going to remain the same, all the prices, and that they're just going to have more money in their pockets. And that's not how it works. Because like you mentioned in another video, it's no secret that people are making more money if the minimum wage is increased that's a that's a government standard every everyone now knows that you are making more that the baseline is now higher all those companies all those landlords all those businesses they now want a piece of that and they're going to raise the cost in order to get it and you, you said it right there everybody's coming for it and so raise the minimum wage it does take the lower stores out let's look at the Let's look at the, I mean, I believe you go to the beaches way more than I do. Uh, his his wife wears the pants, y'all. Don't, don't let him believe Go to me. where? But, um, but, um, but he goes to the beaches a lot. His wife forced him to go to the beaches a lot. Uh, um, she don't force him. What yeah. you, you thought I said? The, no, I, I, I thought you said BTS. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I didn't know you no, said beaches. beaches. All right, so, yeah, so, 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 like, those mom and pop Look like those, you know, you know, like Siesta Key, Clearwater, yeah. and things like that. Those mom, those are mom, those are mom and pop shops. I mean, I haven't been there in a minute, but those mom and pop shops probably have less employees because, or, well, no, they they probably have less employees, or they're bringing in more in house that only the families work in there because they can't afford to hire outside workers because. With minimum wage going up to fifteen dollars an hour, and of course it's seasonal. I mean, Florida is hot longer than most places, but it's still cold times where ain't nobody showing up at the beaches. So that that's the impact when it comes to the beach, the beach communities, and the small mom and pop shops around the beach community, because that's what majority of it is. And me, I prefer I prefer the mom and pop establishments. I I wish and I hope and I pray that there is not chains around beach communities because that would just suck and that would just turn my whole emotion away from Florida altogether. Yeah, yeah, that I would agree with. But with all that being said, guys, if you have any opinions or thoughts, let us know down in the comment section below. Share this video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you guys in the next one.